It's an iconic U.S. national park and one of the seven natural wonders of the world. And when you see it for the first time standing in a place like this, it will leave you speechless. The Grand Canyon is one of the most visited and photographed places on Earth, but only about 10% of the people that come here each year see it like this. That is pretty awesome, boys. The North Rim of the Grand Canyon is higher and more difficult to access than the popular South Rim. Zach and Dave are down here being stupid. But if you can make the extra effort to get here, the payoffs are big. Yeah, it's an iconic location. It's iconic for a reason because of that back there, Mount Hayden. Zach, Dave, and I are making the historic Grand Canyon Lodge our base camp for this photographic adventure through millions of years of geologic artistry that's left a landscape behind too vast to explain with words, but one that is best translated through a language spoken one image at a time. This is what it's all about. Sunset at Bright Angel. It's a nice little quarter mile walk down from the lodge. Like most adventures, this one had a few curveballs. I'll stop right here if you want. Yeah, sure. Okay, get your sound stuff out. You know what? You're gonna be pounding. It's too much wind. And some surprises that took our attention away from the majestic views to a different kind of beauty that's usually overlooked in a place like this. All right, Zach's pretty happy with himself right now. <laughs> he just got a really cool shot of a butterfly. It's the simple things that make the outside Beyond the Lens crew happy. But as we learned, a trip to the Grand Canyon's North Rim isn't just about a world famous destination. And it looks like Zach's not sitting with us. Why is that? Oh, Zach's shooting. <laughs> Zach's shooting some of the pictures. On this one, the journey holds its own desert beauty along the way that paints the entire picture of Northern Arizona's scenic charms. Great night out here, right guys? Yeah. Very cool. It is. Very cool. Blessed to be here. When you travel, the world becomes a smaller place. Pretty incredible stuff. When you explore with friends like mine that are outdoor cinematographers, destinations definitely come to life. Okay, that was loud. We share our love of travel with our cameras, telling the stories of Earth's most amazing places in every frame. But on every adventure, oh, shoot, Dave. the unplanned moments are the ones we remember the most. I did bring a bag of raw chicken. Hang on, I'll be right back. <laughs> Here we go, Lake Como. I'm Jeff Aiello. Go Bridge. <clears throat> and this is Outside Beyond the Lens. It's not always about the obvious big view behind you. Sometimes the prettiest things are right below your feet. Production funding for Outside Beyond the Lens provided by Visit Fresno County. Nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's Central Valley. From Fresno and Clovis, you can drive to three nearby national parks by Hedrix Chevrolet. Hedrix Chevrolet is proud to support the spirit of travel in each of us. Every journey has a first step. Adventures start here. By Advanced Beverage Company, serving Bakersfield and Kern County for over 50 years. From our family to yours, supporting Valley PBS and the wonders of travel. By the Penstar Group, promoting growth and opportunity in business through collaboration and partnerships for the future. By Hodges Electric, serving California's Central Valley since 1979, dedicated to supporting public television and the calling in all of us to explore. And by Visit Yosemite Madera County, California's gateway to Yosemite National Park. Explore the outdoor magic of Madera County and be inspired to discover more. Filming in the desert Southwest is always a favorite. Every year we come here from Central California, the drive seems to get shorter. The places to stop become more familiar. And for us, beginning another Red Rock adventure bright and early from the city of St. George, Utah, has almost become routine. Okay, as many trips do to Southern Utah, we are coming down Highway 9 off the 15 after St. George into the beautiful little town of Hurricane, or Hurricane, if you're from these parts. The town of Hurricane is a hub of sorts for launching a trip into some of Utah and Northern Arizona's popular national parks and wild desert getaways. Utah Route 9 leads into nearby Zion National Park and memorable points beyond, like Bryce Canyon and Capitol Reef. 
It's go. tough to shoot out the window when you got bugs from a nine hour drive. I should only be cleaning my side, but. Yeah, but I appreciate being able to see where we're going. But we're heading south on Highway 59 to the Grand Canyon state of Arizona, a drive that passes through small towns and truck stops below remarkable cliffs, mesas, and wide open plains. The drive from Hurricane up to the north rim of the Grand Canyon is around three hours straight through, but we've decided to make a lot of stops today to capture the changing landscapes along the drive. I like cruise control. Yeah. That is nice. You just let it happen. Oh, you put it on cruise control? Yeah, it's just flying it for me. We hit the Arizona state line in the town of Colorado City which is where Utah 59 turns into Arizona 389 and wraps around the mesas toward Pipe Springs National Monument. All right, we're closing in on the Grand Canyon National Park, just up the road here a little bit, uh, and the clouds are really starting to organize. We're about 2.30 in the afternoon now. It's really getting organized, dark clouds. So as we get closer to the rim, which is that way, um, I would expect we're gonna hear some some rollers and some thunder and lightning here pretty soon, don't you think, Zach? I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Did you bring an umbrella? Yeah, Dave did. Dave always brings an umbrella. I love that guy. In the summer months, subtropical monsoon storms form regularly over the Grand Canyon, creating an average of 25,000 ground strikes here per year, one of the most active lightning regions in America. As we climb in elevation into the evergreen forests of the North Rim's Kaibab Plateau along Route 67, the desert heat rises into the moist, unstable air high above and organizes into strong storm cells. Okay, that was loud. We are uh, almost to the park boundary. We're still in the National Forest right now. We found these really cool old cabins here off the side of the highway. So we pulled in here to get some shots. And uh, we were talking about it. We saw these forming all day long while we were driving out here, but we're under it right now. Really good afternoon uh, thunderstorm here over the North Rim. And we're getting some ground strikes. The speed at which big storms like this can move across the landscape is sometimes surprising. And within a few minutes of getting back into the rig, the monsoon downpour hits. Zach's getting some of that right now. I'm just gonna force focus this thing. And David is back here getting his stuff. And uh, yeah, a little bit of rain hitting us now. It doesn't take long for the storms to pass, leaving behind settings that seem to glow after cool showers have washed the desert off the trees and grasses of the meadows on the plateau. There's a lot of cracking over this side, man. Woo! And it ripped right here. Our arrival to the Grand Canyon Lodge on the North Rim was odd. The typical rush and anticipation of seeing into one of nature's wonders was muted by the storm that had hit us 20 miles out and another cell approaching from the South Rim. The stunning observation decks usually filled with canyon gazers was empty as another round of heavy rain begins. All right, what do you boys think? Gnarly. <laughs> We're just sort of just Gnarly. over yeah. done here. It's so cool. <laughs> even, if you've, even if you've seen it a couple times, like you said, Dave. Yeah, you just you forget how impressive it is. I haven't been here since I was a teenager. This is like, I feel like I've never seen it before. As the next storm closes in on the Grand Canyon Lodge, the observation room perched on the Mile High Cliffs is a safer place to witness the forces that have shaped this canyon for millions of years. After checking into the lodge and getting our gear ready, clearing skies signal a return to the North Rim's edge for park visitors and lodge guests. The 
air cleaned by heavy rains, storm mist still hanging in the canyon. The views from the Bright Angel hike just below the lodge take on the look of a watercolor painting in the pastel light. The Bright Angel hike isn't long, but the narrow trail can be daunting for those with a fear of high places. It's also a spot with many off-trail escapes that can put you right on the cliff's edge. A front row seat with a high price to pay for those who aren't extra careful here. All right, this is what it's all about. Sunset at Bright Angel. It's a nice little quarter mile walk down from the lodge and it's such a great night. The storms have blown over. Zach and Dave are somewhere up ahead on the trail and I've just been taking my time just walking really easy, enjoying every step of this little walk down here. I've been here a couple times before and this time of the night is just magical to be here. And it's just quiet and it's still and the air is really clean from the storms. Um, it's cool, it's probably not even, and it's probably mid 60s right now. So when you come to the Grand Canyon Lodge, this is one of the, the must do's is uh, the Bright Angel hike. Near the trail's end at Bright Angel Point, I finally spot Zach and Dave lining up some shots for sunset over the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Now, I've been looking all over for Zach and Dave, and I got to the end of Bright, end of Bright Angel. Of course, found them in a pretty good spot. <laughs> that is pretty awesome, boys. It's not as bad as it looks. Just disclaimer. So I don't get in trouble when I'm back home. <laughs> That is awesome. With the sun making its slow descent to the horizon, a small crowd gathers to capture images of a desert summer sunset over one of America's top national parks. A chance to share in a special moment as light, landscape, and sky collaborate one last time for the day. End of the day, sunset here. We're at Bright Angel, just below the Grand Canyon Lodge in Grand Canyon National Park, meeting some new friends. Hi, new friends from Monterey. Uh, right on. Red. That's right. I got some fellow Californians here. <laughs> Zach and Dave are down here being stupid. Uh, getting some. Uh, Zach's got a time lapse rocking, and Dave's got the 70 to 200 millimeter rocking and getting some good stuff. So. I thought he was hired. He was hired. Oh, that's right. The, the, uh, what was your name? <laughs> Raul. Yeah, I saw Raul earlier. In fact, I'll cut right now to a shot of Raul that he let me take of him. <laughs> cut. That's a cool shot, Ra Raul sitting out, looking out over the abyss, and it was really awesome. And uh, I, I shared it with you via airdrop, which we can do out here, which is cool. And uh, after seeing some of Raul's handiwork, um, I did have to give Zach his pink slip. So, um, Zach, we're going to arrange travel for you back home to California tomorrow. I'm just going to give him a little kick right now. Yeah. <laughs> Raul's going to give him a little nudge. Yeah, Raul's pretty affordable. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just, and look at Zach's shirt right now. See, that's the thing I got to wonder about. Pay me for my experience, not my time. <laughs> I got his experiences. Now it's anyway, time. great night out here, right, guys? Yeah. Very cool. It is. Very cool. Blessed to be here. Morning over the North Rim begins new hope and anticipation for capturing images of life on the less traveled side of the Grand Canyon. Even though these are the same views as last night from Bright Angel, the canyon wears many faces, changing by the hour as light and shadow dance on the canyon walls. But the Grand Canyon Lodge isn't the only place to take in these postcard views on the North Rim. From here, the unforgettable Cape Royal Drive begins and winds 15 miles to the southernmost viewpoint on the Grand Canyon's northern rim. Along the way, many spectacular panoramas of the Grand Canyon can be enjoyed. Our first stop is one of my personal favorites at Point Imperial. All right, I am here with Zach Allen, who is now, he's actually on my camera because he spotted something. He goes, Jeff, shoot this one. You see that thing down there and it's the way the light's hitting the ridge and the double layer. And I said, Zach, just take the camera. Just 
Just do it, Zach, just do it. And then if you walk over here with me, and this is a dramatic, beautiful, giant look. Um, you can see the Colorado River kind of flows this way. Some side canyons come into it here and here. And then the Colorado keeps on going around the backside of this feature right here. And so we're gonna drive around the backside of that on the Cape Royal Drive today. Yep, you got it. So Zach's getting the wide angle lens out. And, uh, but this is so wonderful here at Point Imperial. You can just get this entire panorama. It's quiet, except for the occasional tour helicopters that are flying today. They didn't fly yesterday because of the bad weather. But we are happy, right, Zach? Yeah, it is great. It is great. The drive south on Cape Royal Road is a twisting pathway through ponderosa pines, Douglas fir, and aspen trees. It traces the North Rim's edge, revealing glimpses of the canyon floor at several points with many established parking lots and trailheads along the way. But as is often the case, a safe place to pull over, unmarked and close to the Grand Canyon's edge is exactly what Zach, Dave and I are looking for. And this stop is one that really delivers. What's great about this is not a lot of places to see the river, the Colorado River down below, but we kind of know a couple secret spots. So we pulled over off the side of the road, no sign, no distinct trail, and uh, jumped over the, uh, over the hill here to shoot. David and I have shot here before a long time ago, so we kind of know about this spot. Nearly two billion years of Earth's geologic history have been exposed by the Colorado River and its tributaries, revealing layer after layer of rock as the Colorado Plateau slowly uplifted over time. The current course of the Colorado River was established around six million years ago, according to geologists, simultaneously downcutting and widening the canyon. It's a really interesting piece of rock down there big escarpment, the river kind of cuts around, around it. See that down there? I just kind of, it's like a big tilted pool table with that river cutting on the one side. Moving closer to the cliff's edge, we begin to notice something none of us have experienced before in the Grand Canyon's North Rim. And it's a reminder of the classroom the world can be when you travel. Ooh, that's a lot of down right there. <laughs> Today's lesson, explore beyond the obvious. When your gaze is focused on the grand panoramas Earth has to offer, be sure to appreciate the wonders at your feet. Yeah, this is really special to have this much flower bloom going on right on the rim of the Grand Canyon in late July. Thank you, awesome winter of 23. Right now, you can see Zach over my shoulder here. He's spending some time with our friends, the butterflies. And uh, although it's getting hot, it's a little warm today, probably getting up in the 80s, 90s right now, these flowers mixed with the contrast of what's going on behind us with the Grand Canyon and the Colorado River Gorge back here is really special. Doesn't happen all the time. Where's Dave? Is he right there? There he is, I can see him now. He's shooting close-ups of tarantula hawks, which are a pretty gnarly looking big black waspy looking critter um, that take out tarantulas apparently. Um, but uh, right now they're pulling nectar off these flowers. And Zach, you like those kind of critters, those kind of flying critters, don't you? Zach says he's gonna go get stung right now. I don't have a med kit in the, in the rig, just so you know. Cape Royal Road eventually terminates here at the parking lot and trailhead to Cape Royal Point and another one of our favorite North Rim destinations, Angel's Window. The short walk on a paved trail leads to one of the more heart-stopping viewpoints on the North Rim, where your fear of heights will definitely be tested. But if you have the nerve to make the narrow pass to the main observation area, you will have dramatic, vertically intensive views of the Grand Canyon that really capture the scale of this geologic wonder. All right, so here I am at the end of the Angel Window little spur hike. 
and it's way down. But great views of the river off in the distance. We've got some close-ups of that. Um, and the clouds are getting together. Thunderstorms may or may not come to happen. Here pretty soon, I'm watching off in the distance, but you have a chance on the North Rim. This is another, uh, another one of the uh, star attractions for sure. Afternoon light and gathering storm clouds paint a surreal picture over Cape Royal Point at the end of today's adventure. Another mesmerizing Zach Allen time-lapse captures the dance between desert rock, sky, and sun. And while the views of the Grand Canyon from the North Rim are awe-inspiring most hours of the day, sunrise over this promised land for landscape photographers can be an event long remembered and forever captured in camera. All right, uh, in the uh, hotel room here at the Grand Canyon Lodge, 4.30 in the morning, our last day here. Gonna grab cameras here. Zach is already uh, on his way to the truck. And Dave is apparently coming too. David's lights on. Dave, you coming? Yeah. Right on, Boomer's coming. All right, this is good. C copy that, I'm, I'm heading up right now to the truck. Okay, hey, it's dark, turn your light on. Where, where's, where's David? He's coming. He's coming. I'm surprised how windy did you get just walking from the car. Dude, yeah. It's 9,000 feet elevation now, so. <laughs> yeah, it's an extra thousand going up the stairs. <laughs> yeah. The anticipation of an approaching sunrise always dampens the pain of a 4 a.m. alarm. The Cape Royal Road is quiet this morning as we head back to Point Imperial for the start of a new day. Mother Nature has gifted us with not only a beautiful, you know, day, lining up, but for sunrise, we've got these high cirrus clouds that are already started catching some of the light of the sun coming up, but that's gonna really kick our sunrise shots off. Modern technology and smartphone apps tell us the exact time the sun will rise at this location. And even though we have about 15 minutes to set up, there's always nervous energy getting into the right spot. With early morning desert photography like this, it's not always about the actual sun rising, but how the low angle light cuts through the atmosphere, haze, dust, and smoke, casting a warm glow on the red rock and sandstone of the Grand Canyon. We're not the only ones here at Point Imperial this morning. A group of new landscape photographers learning the craft from one of three artists in residence in Grand Canyon National Park are here to further their journey in image making. You're here with clients this morning. Right. That must mean this is one of your favorite places to grab a sunrise? It is, it is. This is their first morning out on our multi-day workshop. And yeah, it's an iconic location. It's iconic for a reason, because of that back there, Mount Hayden. You know, especially in the morning, catching light on its east face. Yeah, you know, I want to give them that opportunity to shoot some of the iconic locations. Uh, we get out and we visit a lot of other places that people don't see in the magazines and everything. How is it as a guide and an instructor to see the work that you're, the, the folks that come to you do as they grow as photographers? That's oh, gotta yeah. be really satisfying. I love working with others and sharing my passion for the place, but also my passion for the art of photography and getting to see people uh, grow or evolve, mature as photographers and seeing the work they create, that is inspirational. You know, one of my clients here is placed in photo contest with some of the images he made. And again, they were his images that I got him there and gave him some guidance. But we've, I've seen him grow a lot and uh, he's just becoming a really great photographer and that just does a lot for me. Thanks you guys. Yeah, thanks for letting us barge in on you. <laughs> You're such a jerk. I know. Put that on film. <laughs> <laughs> blooper reel, blooper nice reel. Guy. He was a nice guy. <laughs> Focus on me, the hell with him. <laughs> <laughs> the lessons this classroom continue to teach go well beyond the mechanics and art of photography. 
Travel is a lifelong lesson for those who come to class. But just being in the classroom doesn't guarantee learning. Like skipping homework or taking a nap in the back row, you'll miss the true joy and value of travel if you don't take the time to explore beyond the places of comfort and popularity most of us go. The North Rim of the Grand Canyon is here for those ready to learn. Production funding for Outside Beyond the Lens provided by Visit Fresno County. Nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's Central Valley. From Fresno and Clovis, you can drive to three nearby national parks by Hedrix Chevrolet. Hedrick Chevrolet is proud to support the spirit of travel in each of us. Every journey has a first step. Adventures start here. By Advanced Beverage Company, serving Bakersfield and Kern County for over 50 years. From our family to yours, supporting Valley PBS and the wonders of travel. By the Penstar Group, promoting growth and opportunity in business through collaboration and partnerships for the future. By Hodges Electric, serving California's Central Valley since 1979. Dedicated to supporting public television and the calling in all of us to explore. And by Visit Yosemite Madera County, California's gateway to Yosemite National Park. Explore the outdoor magic of Madera County and be inspired to discover more.